Fellow soldiers in service from Burma Army, my name is Mio Mint. I, like you, used to serve in the Burma Army as a military engineer. I joined the Army in 1980 and was wounded in 1984 at CC1 Dapan outpost, situated in northern Shan state, and was discharged from the Army with a military medical pension in 1987. As a soldier in the front lines, I not only saw, knew, and witnessed the atrocities of civil war to civilians, but also finally, as you can see, I myself became a victim of the civil war. That is why, before I was discharged from the army, I made up my mind to stop the civil war and to rebuild internal peace as best as I can. After I was discharged, I secretly contacted opposition armed groups. We talked and together found means and ways to stop the civil war. The then military regime didn't like my determination and my activities to stop the civil war. Therefore, they arrested me and sent me to prison. I was in prison almost 15 years as a political prisoner. Aiming to fight against imperialism, fascism, and to regain independence, the Burma Army was established by its founders. In those times, it was honored and dignified with a good reputation. People loved, relied upon, and regarded it as a national patriotic army. Before, during, and after regaining independence from the British, leaders of Burma Army were able to maintain the highest level of standards up to 1962. General Ne Win and his colleagues destroyed all of these things and the military traditions after taking over state power in 1962. You could distinctly see the army was loved, relied upon, and respected by the people of Burma during the anti-Kumitan invasion into Burma. The present leaders of the military, those in control, never had a chance to serve in the army during this period. That's not to say that they shouldn't lead without having served in the past, as the army will always be led by a new generation. But the new military leaders must keep the traditions and good deeds from the past and maintain them in the future. They must reform the army so it will be loved, relied upon, and respected by the people. These are the responsibilities that fall on the shoulders of all new military leaders. General Aung San, founder of the Burma Army, resigned from the army when he realized that it was time for him to lead the country and people politically. He believed that he would be able to do more for the sake of the country and independence as a political leader, so he resigned from the army and led the Anti-Fascist People's League. His is the best example to follow for all military leaders. Soldiers are citizens of Burma, so they have the right to be involved in politics. But one very important thing to do before participating in politics is to resign from the military. Let's look to democratic countries where political power and a military role stand separately and independently. Likewise, General Aung San is the best example to all military leaders that we must separate political power from a military role. After General Aung San and the marchers were assassinated, General Ne Win gradually took control of the Burma army. He changed the army and moved it from once well-respected army to his hired gun. The policy General Aung San lay down was destroyed. Some years after he took over state power, he adopted one-party rule state constitution and changed his uniform to civilian clothes to disguise himself as a politician. He left the army to lead his loyal yes-men generals. He governed the country strictly and controlled the army since 1962 to 1988. Before the army took over state power, Burma was known as the richest among the Southeast Asian countries. Due to their fake socialism and 26 years of misgoverning, Burma became one of the least developed countries, or poorest countries. The situation in Burma was getting worse and worse. Finally, people became so frustrated and upset that in 1988 
they took to the streets and staged demonstrations. When governments and some opposition leaders explain civil war, they always point out and lay blame on the legacy of the British colonialist era. That was all we were told. Though I don't disagree with their explanation, my point of view is that they should have tried to solve this issue after we regained independence. Political conflicts cause civil war. Civil war is a political issue. We must solve this problem through a political process because this is rooted in political conflicts. Governments always practiced one-sided means and ways and used military might. Fellow soldiers need to understand very clearly that not only British colonialism but also governments are perpetrators of the civil war. Whenever the ethnic armed democratic forces demanded their ethnic rights, such as self-determination, the government denied their requests. The government is practicing Burman majority rule and oppression to minority ethnics. Instead of solving this issue peacefully, the government propaganda shows them as enemies and destructive elements of the country. That is why civil war has lasted longer. It has lasted from 1948 until now. You can say it is the longest lasting one in the world. Due to the deterioration of the situation in the country, people took to the streets bravely and demanded resolutely to the then government to stop the one-party ruling system, to establish a multi-party system and market economy. As you know, the military cracked down very severely and brutally. Thousands of demonstrators were killed, arrested and sent to prisons and died due to torture. After the 1988 democracy uprising, Senior General Saw Ma and his colleagues in 1990 stated and promised officially to the international communities and the country that they would hold multi-party elections and transfer state power to the elected party and go back to the military barracks. In that election, the NLD led by Aung San Suu Kyi won by a landslide. Then they refused to hand over power to the elected body. As an all-out effort to not transfer power, they held a sham national convention, adopted a constitution, arrested and imprisoned activists, and detained politicians, including Aung San Suu Kyi. They did all these things brashly and audaciously. In 2008, they held a referendum to legitimize their military-led constitution. After they refused to honor the 1990 election result, they held a new election. In this new election, they manipulated their Yes Man Party, USDA, in order to win and unfairly created a so-called civilian government composed by former military juntas. One section of the 2008 Constitution allows the military leaders to officially take state power at any time if they think the time is right to stage a coup. It was meant to give the army leaders the right to coup any time they like. In the past, when they staged a coup, they used the army as their stooge and hired gun, made profits and promoted self-interests to become richer and richer. Consider that when they took over power, they destroyed dignity and military traditions. If we let them stage a coup in the future, it means we allow them to destroy the army. If the army were destroyed again, the relationship between the army and the people would be damaged even more and make them bitter enemies. Nobody can deny it, so we must not let them do it again. We should not let them use the army for personal gain. To prevent it, soldiers from the army need to demand that they remove these unjust sections from the 2008 Constitution. The population of the present army is bigger than ever. We only have a big army. We cannot boast about it as a professional and mighty army. When we have military skills, powerful weapons, equipment and technology, then it can be said we have a professional army. Moreover, it is very important to note that the soldiers must be educated. To look at the Burma army, most of the lower ranks are illiterate and non-educated. They never had a chance for education before or after joining the army. Soldiers from professional armies at least have basic higher-level education. 
Even if we have powerful weapons and high technology, how can we say this is a professional army if it is composed of low educated soldiers? To be a professional army, we need not only the facilities, but we also need to improve the education of the soldiers. You cannot expect a professional army to come from a country with so many weaknesses. All soldiers need to rethink their slogan, only the military is the mother and father of all soldiers. Who supports and provides to you the things you need? Who are your real parents? The people of Burma are your real parents. You must regard them as your real parents and stand with them. You must oppose the military's fake propaganda and be good soldiers. When we are recruited as soldiers, we must agree to sign a contract to serve in the army for 10 years. Practically, how many soldiers can resign after serving a full 10 years? Even though some want to resign, they have no vocational skills and don't know how to survive as civilians. They don't dare resign. Therefore, they have to serve in the army 30 to 40 years until they are old. Soldiers from democratic countries can resign after their contract is up. They are provided money for education and are provided full pension after 20 years. In the Burma army there is no difference between soldiers who are unable to resign and political prisoners. In service, the benefits are much different between the officers and the lower ranks. You can hear disappointed voices coming from the lower ranks military barracks because the salary is not enough. At the same time, you can see the officers living in luxury with more than enough. Retired soldiers are faced with not enough pension, lack of education, and old age with no place to live. So they work in cheap labor and ask the monasteries for shelter. It is very sorrowful to see handicapped former soldiers asking for money on the streets as beggars. What a pity. The Burma army should be transformed as a union army. The leadership roles must be shared by Burman and ethnic minorities. The duties of a union army are to defend the sovereignty of the country and to protect and care for the people and their property. Only when we reform the army as a union army will there be equality, unity, and peace. You can see the ungraceful end of dictators who use the army as their stooges. By watching the end of Gaddafi, who controlled Libya for 42 years, and Saddam from Iraq, dictators should rethink their actions and repent. The fall of dictators means the collapse of their army which supported them. I don't want to see the Burma army disintegrate. Do you want to continue to protect dictators and their cronies? I urge you to protect your country, its people, and their property. You have options. You are the people with the power to change the future of the Burma army, good or bad. You can change the army to love and be loved, to rely and to be relied on, to trust and to be trusted. In this civil war from 1948 to now, you can see there are many widows who lost their husbands, mothers looking for their lost sons, children who lost their fathers, and handicapped people who have lost their limbs.
While we brothers are fighting and killing each other, falling into troubles, they claim themselves as our saviors and are making profits. In conclusion, it is never too late to do well. This is the best time to reunite with the ethnics, to stop civil war, and to end the dictatorship. Thanks.